right, good morning, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Success Zone, Monday morning edition. Monday morning, no, Jeff, Wednesday morning. Wednesday morning edition. That's better, right? Okay, let me get my stuff up. All right, I know we will have uh, people that will be logging in from, from different companies. And um, what I wanna share with you is this is a platform a non-recruiting platform uh, just to really share with people, you know, basics of the industry uh, of network marketing. Sometimes we get real deep. Sometimes we go to uh, different layers um, uh, of leadership, but basically this is just personal development. And, uh, you know, all of you have made a commitment um, to take your product or your service into the marketplace. And when you do that, you get paid off multiple levels of people that are doing that. So one of the key components as you go out there and build your business is bringing on your team. You know, you could call your team, and these are some, some tips. You're looking for your board of directors, right? You're looking for your core group. And, and when you do that, you gotta, you've got to be able to paint the vision for people of what it is they have to do if they want to get involved in this opportunity and I want to emphasize that word opportunity because you can't make product claims in your company you can't make income claims this is an opportunity that they will be given and what they do with it is completely up to them what we want to do is provide value what we want to do is provide right the the, the roadmap so there is a value in the training, in the training that, that people will receive. In fact, let me share with you this. I think a lot of people stick around and stay in because of the training. They may stick around and they, they do nothing. You gotta understand the numbers. One third of everybody you bring in, do nothing. One third incubate. And one third actually start to go out there and go to work. So when you have a good training program, maybe it keeps that person in long enough so maybe they do give birth, right? I can't duplicate unless somebody gives birth, right? And once they give birth, now there's a responsibility to you as the sponsor to give that people the best education, right? And, and the best structure so they have the best opportunity to get what they want out of the business. That's all you could do. You're a guide, right? You have somebody, here, here's the analogy, right? You wake up one day and you have no sight, right? You have no sight, you're blind. And now, right? You're given a guide dog, right? You, you, you are the guide dog for the person that gets involved in the business because they can't see. They can't see what you see, right? All they know is what? I have a situation I have to change. And here you are, you've been, you've been put into my life and you've given me this opportunity and I've accepted it. And if you just release that person, right, into the world, what's their chances of survival? Can you imagine, what are the chances of a newborn gazelle surviving the Serengeti, right, without their mother, right? Can you imagine, you know the little newborn gazelle that could barely walk when they first come out? Their, their legs are like rubber, right? And they're surrounded by a pack of lions. Well, that's what we do. We release some of our brand new people into the Serengeti. And we say, go do it. And the first, <laughs> the first male lion just kind of looks at them, right? And they collapse from a heart attack. Well, that's how a lot of people run their business, right? We don't equip them, right, for the heat, for no water, and for all the predators that are out there. And those predators, right, come at us with venom. These are the naysayers. And so when you equip your people through training, it betters their chances. Now listen to my words. 
betters their chances for survival. Sounds horrible, but that is the analogy I want to use. I mean, how many people are going to make it right to adulthood? How many people are going to make it? Well, if we, if we do what we're supposed to do, I will promise you, okay, their chances go way up. And I like my chances 50-50 versus 100% chance it'll never happen. So as you listen to this training, okay, take it in for yourself, but ask yourself, am I doing this for my new people? This industry called network marketing is seeing an unbelievable growth pattern. I'm talking about the industry. More people enter into this industry than any other industry on a daily basis. Okay, but why is it still that most people fail? Well, first of all, you got to define what failure is. To me, failure is only the way you could fail is to quit. If you continue to take the journey, you can never fail. You're on your path to success. But still, most people won't continue the journey. Well, you got to break it down and ask yourself, why is that? Okay, well, it's because maybe, right, maybe we didn't give them the roadmap for them to follow. So let's go through some of the, um, the things and the mentality of what launches most people's business. And I'm gonna ask all of you, okay, what launched your business in the beginning? You know, you, you probably received some information. The person that was giving you the information, I promise you was probably somewhat excited. They were probably enthusiastic, maybe, maybe not, I don't know. Okay, maybe you got a video. But you identified that this opportunity or your opportunity as something you can do. If you didn't think you can do it, if you didn't get excited about it, you probably would have never made that decision. You saw possibilities. Can we agree with that? Okay. Take the person away that, that introduced you. But you saw possibilities. You bought into somebody's vision. You bought into maybe the company story the founder's story, or your sponsor's story. You bought into something. So what launches most people's business is that initial information. So a lot of us, we have tools, right? We've talked about this. You maybe have an introductory video. Maybe it's your personal relationship because it was a warm market. Maybe you led them right to a webinar. Whatever it was, something got you or your prospect excited enough to make that decision. And that's what launches most people's business. So knowing that, knowing that, if you're out there and you wanna build your team, what do you have to bring to the table? You gotta bring excitement to the table. You gotta bring enthusiasm to the table, right? You gotta believe, you gotta bring belief to the table. And that's communicated through what? Through body language, right? Through, through, through maybe some knowledge. But I'm telling you, it's not really the knowledge of your comp plan or the product. What people are buying into is your belief. So this, this, this is what gets people at least open for a small period of time to want your information. Now watch, right? The door's open this much. You've opened it. Now you got to get your information through that door. And you got to get that person, right, to, to want to receive and, and get your information. This is the urgency. Because if I have a little crack and I'm putting my information in and I let three or four days go by without follow-up, or without the urgency, that person goes back and the door closes again. Why is that? Because life takes them back away. So you have them for maybe what? Five minutes? And you may, you may spark that excitement. You may spark it. But if you don't get them information quickly, okay, they go right back to, right? We're all ADD to a point. They go back to the kids, they go back to the wife, they go back to the job, and it sucks them back in. 
So you have this window of opportunity to let people know there's another way. So this is what usually launches people's business. I know if I go, to, if, if I go back to my past in whatever company I was in, okay, I remember always the person that represented it and why I was open. And it's probably because I respected the person, right? Or I, I, I believed in what they were telling me and they quickly led me to information. But Jeff and Lisa well, were open. Okay, you know today, you know, this day will go by, okay? And I promise you, by the time today's over, I will have at least two people, one to two people every day will reach out to me about another opportunity. And I'm sure all of you are inundated at times with people trying to represent it, okay? But here's the deal. They're dealing at this point with a closed door. I'm not willing to receive that information. Okay, so obviously it goes on deaf ears. But if something changes, okay, if something dramatically changes, wouldn't my door be a little bit open to receive the info? Just know that about people. Just because a door is closed, all that means is you got to take your enthusiasm and excited elsewhere right now because I'm not willing to receive it. That's all it means. So don't take it personally. Don't get all distraught. They're just not open. Okay, so put them in your little tickler file. You know what a tickler file is? Okay, it, it, it's a file of people you talk to and they weren't open. And maybe you touch base with them every 30 days. Some people have a tickler file, they touch base every 60 days, just to touch base. Okay, and you go back, okay, because you never know when situations change. But guess what? You gotta bring the same excitement and enthusiasm 30, 60 days from now. So that's what launches most people's business. It's called enthusiasm. Okay, and if the door was open, okay, then that usually prompts, now listen, listen, a fast decision. When someone's open, they don't pontificate. The right person doesn't have to research. Usually when the door is not open and because they can't say no to you, that's when all the stuff comes out. I have to research. I have to look at your comp plan. I need to call and, and verify and, and do what I do. You know what that means? No, that's what it means. And you're trying to get him all the research papers, okay? And I understand it, I understand it, but I may still give them what, I, what they think they need, but I don't put any emphasis on them actually gonna say yes. You follow me? In other words, they're not part of my business plan. I'm not gonna be rude and say, you don't need that. Okay, I could cover it, I could cover it, you know, prior to, me make, prior to me talking to them through my story, I could say, you know what, I was represented, someone represented this opportunity to me, and because it made sense to me, you know what, I didn't have to do any research. I knew in my gut. So I'm setting it up, okay, before he even brings it up. You follow me? That's another training. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm diverting, okay? Now, this is what helps people make a decision. I want you all to think about the last three people that got involved in your company. How long did it take them to actually make the decision? How long did it take them? The last three people, were they pontificating for six months? Probably not, okay? Or did they really get the information and pretty quickly made that decision? And then I'll ask all of you, how long did it take you? Maybe a couple of phone calls, some information. Maybe I get some questions answered. But I promise you within usually a 72 hour period, you got people, okay, that are gonna say yes or no. My job is to get a yes or no. 
And when someone's open, they quickly make the decision. So it's easy, guys, to start the engine. With some of the things that you've learned, okay, in your company or maybe on, on this platform, it should be easy to start someone's engine. Your company gives you the tools to at least start the engine. Okay, but here's the deal. What keeps them going? Got to put gas in the engine, right? You got to put gas in the engine because people are going to give you up to maybe, maybe, this is pretty um, um, a positive slide, 120 days. 30, 60, 90, 120 days, and they're going to determine, do I keep going or do I quit? So I got to put as much gas into that tank to get them launched. I got to get them quick results. I got to figure out what I have very quickly. I got to get them working my program. Okay, otherwise, you know what it looks like? It looks like this. Did you ever bring somebody in that was excited? And you say, what, 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 what happened to so-and-so? I do it every day. <laughs> Lisa and I go, oh yeah, remember so-and-so who got involved with us in April? What happened? Well, so-and-so ran out of gas. Well, let's look at the upline. Oh, a lot of people ran out of gas in that leg. Wonder why? Well, let's look at the leader. He always go back. And then, then I got to look within myself. Well, I, I'm actually the leader. So what was it that could have happened? Normally, sometimes it's unsolvable. There's unsolvable problems out there, guys. So if you're doing all the right things, that's all you can do. Remember the four agreements? Always do your best. If you're doing that, then you know what? Some people are just meant to start and quit. That's just how they've run their whole life. Don't take it personally. Another, for, another agreement. If, if, if you're doing the right things. So what are the right things? Right? Sitting down with them once they make the decision walking them through your get started or your welcome letter, whatever you guys have, finding out their why, creating that desire, making their list with them, right? Hand holding, hand holding. And if you're doing those basics and you start helping them and start making some calls and available for three ways, you've done your job. Plugging them into the system, that betters your chances for them not to run out of gas. And so what you have to relay to the new person is that, you know what, your business decision that you made was the best decision you've made in your whole life. We're going to set some goals, right? We're going to set a destination. We're going to put together our plan. And I want to make sure you understand this decision that you made Okay, we're going to help you through simplicity. This is not something you have to learn. This is just something that we have to do. And then you plug them into your training system. The knowledge base. The only people they see right now is who? You. You're the knowledge base. You're the all. You're the mama. Why do you think I call Lisa mama? All distributors always used to call her mama, okay? Because she understands, okay? I may have given birth, okay? I give the birth, right? And then I give it to Lisa. Here, clean this thing up. <laughs> I, I don't know what this does. She goes, I got you. And she'll take it, she'll bathe it. She'll coddle it, she'll burp it, she'll change the diaper. That's Lisa. Okay. You I don't know if you have a Lisa, but if you don't, you better you better get one. Okay. You gotta have somebody on the back end. Okay, that makes sure that baby has a chance. That's what Lisa does. Right? Mean, sometimes people text me, you know what I do? Sonia will tell you. I'll go text Lisa that one. 
She'll ask me something, I go, what? Text Lisa. Okay, you gotta have your, you, you're running a business, everybody. In the beginning, you may be all things to that person. You are. You're their mentor, you're their counselor, right? You're their shrink. How many times have you had a distributor that just pours out all their problems to you? Right? And you'll sit there and you'll nod and they'll, they'll drain you dry. You spend your time with the right people. You gotta be able to cipher through this quickly. Are these people just want, want someone to talk to or they wanna build a business? Otherwise now you're spending all your time with someone who doesn't produce. That's another, that's a landmine for you. The distributor loves you. Oh, they're the best. And here's a big red flag. When I talk to somebody and they go, oh my, I just got off the phone with so-and-so. And I was on the call for two and a half hours with so-and-so. And I'm thinking to myself, what? Two and a half hours? Oh yeah, at least three days a week. And so I'm telling you, they, they, they just love it. And I'm thinking to myself, <laughs> they may love it, but you're going broke. Because so-and-so, you're not going to solve. So-and-so has unsolvable problems. Now, I'm diverting again, okay? But my, my brain goes, because it's amazing. When I do these trainings, people's images come through my head of all the people that I used to have throughout the years go through this. It's crazy. It's like I gotta, I gotta block these people out of my head, okay? But, but it's, it's this is what happens. So what do we do? We sit down. We do what we're supposed to do. We have our checklist, and we plug them into the system, and we guide. And if we get somebody that's really, really good, I, I'll stay with them. I'll live with them. But knowledge keeps people in. Knowledge is gas. Hopefully this is some gas for some of you on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. It maybe it keeps you going. So you stay in long enough so you go, you know what? I'm, I think I might sponsor somebody this month. <laughs> I just cracked myself up. All right, now, <laughs> here, here is your business. <laughs> uh, I'm like slap happy. Hang on, let me get some coffee. All right, so here's our business. Our business and your business are three components. Doesn't matter, the company. Every company has products. There lies the opportunity. If you take the product away, you have a pyramid. Right, do you understand what a pyramid is? All a pyramid is is this. Let me give you a pyramid, because a lot of you don't even know what one is. Okay, I'm gonna run a pyramid today. And everybody on this call, okay, here's what it costs to be involved in my pyramid, $100,000. And you're gonna say, okay, what do I get? I'm gonna give you a 25% return on a monthly basis on your $100,000. And they're gonna go, oh my gosh, how are you gonna do it? And I'll have all my plan. It's, it's some offshore account, Okay, and I'm telling you, it's, it's, it's been thrown off all this money, and if you give me 100,000, and all of you give me 100,000, okay, right? And then the month comes up, and I gotta pay you all 25%, right? So what do I gotta do? I gotta bring in another 25 people to give me 100,000, so I could pay the 25% to the initial 25, 25 people. That's called a pyramid. That's just money going around and around. And that's what people a lot of say when they say multi-level, that's what they think of. So that's just another way of you overcoming that objection. It's just a pyramid. No, we have a product. And if a product isn't sold, we can't pay a commission. No legitimate multi-level marketing company pays a commission unless a product is sold to an end user. Period. Okay, now. Your companies have a product, whatever it is, maybe one product, maybe multiple products. But what separates us from everybody else is we have a 
opportunity attached to our product. What separates your product from the one I could buy at GNC? Well, the one at GNC doesn't give you an opportunity to market it and make money. We do. We give you that opportunity because we don't have our products in 10,000 GNCs. So our marketing expense and the way we get our products to the marketplace is through individual distributors bringing that product into the marketplace and they make a commission. Oh, so that's what separates our, our product has money attached. That's what separates our product. So you have an opportunity, correct? And then you have the training. So when someone gets involved in the business, you gotta paint the picture. Okay, this is what we're offering everybody. And if you take any one of these things away, what happens to the triangle? Collapses. So it's an equal lateral triangle. Check out me with my math. Is that math? See, I don't even know if that's even math, okay? So that's products, opportunity, training. So I know, and there's a whole training that goes attached to this, I gotta get people to believe in the product. How do I do that? Use it. Whatever the product is, it's gotta be something you use, right? The, the, the opportunity is what I gotta get them to see. So this is where you take that new distributor and say, okay, we need to set some goals. Why is it you made that decision last night and you gave me X amount of money? Why did you do that? Okay, now we've got to set a game plan. What are you willing to do? How many calls are you willing to make? And how many days a week are you willing to do this? I got to get them to see what they're actually doing to earn the money they want to make. And then, Make sure they're connected to your calendar. All your companies have a calendar of events. Please make sure, please make sure that they, that they have that and tell them what they need to be on. And I'm telling you, if you are supporting the system, you'll have people that support the system. It's amazing. It's amazing what happens, okay? When you edify the leadership, you don't try to change the program, you don't do things only your way. These are all the things that sabotage people's businesses. So these are, this is why we have a great opportunity. But now you gotta understand what a new distributor wants versus what they need. Most distributors, because you're gonna lead with the product, they, the intellectual explanation is, I need to understand the product. How does it work? What do I say if? Right? What do I say if, 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 if they say this? Whatever it may be. That's the, that's the intellectual thing. Now, I'm not saying it's not important to understand, okay, the product a little bit, but you don't want to make them product experts. Let them know the company's done that research. You don't have to go into the weeds on the product. If I had to go into the weeds on the product that we have, I, I, <laughs> I don't know what I would do, okay? Because I don't know half. I don't even, I, don't, I, I can't even, I, I won't even tell you, okay? But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Okay, even the company I just came from, I, do you think I knew how the wearable worked? We were with World Global Network. People say, how does it work? I go, I don't know, I just put it on my wrist. I, I press this button and it worked. Let me ask you all a question. How many of you have one of these? How does it work? No, before I buy this, hang on, before I buy this, I need to know how it works. How many people said that when you went to Verizon? Did you say that to the person? Let, go try that today. Well, before I buy this, I need to know how does it work. Watch the look you get. And how many people do you think actually asked that question? 
But why do we allow it here? Because we're rookies. We don't understand. They're not really asking how does it work. You know what I used to say when I had supplements? How does it work? I say, you look at it. Here's how it works. See this? That's how it works. And they just look at me. Well, no, but, but really, when, how, how does it work? I go, well, maybe you didn't see this. Watch. I swallowed it. That's how it works. I don't know how it works. Do you know how your, your prescription works that the doctor wrote you? Do you ask them before he does that? Well, I have an infection. Well, you need an antibiotic. Well, hang on a second, doc. Before, before I take this and get it filled, can you tell me how it works? Who says that? Okay. I, I hope you got my point. Okay. Don't get caught up. But understand why people ask this. And you can't fall into it. It delays. There's a mental battle going on. Maybe they doubt their decision. Maybe a fearful it won't work. They're, they're procrastinating. And they're dragging you in to their stuff. I remember when I first got started, they go, don't worry about how it works. Here's the science. Here's our program. You sample the stuff. That's how you know it works. Okay, got it. So don't, don't go down that rabbit hole. What they need, what they need, 10% product training, 10% comp training, 80% this type of training. It's the you training. It's the system. It's, it's the development. It's amazing. The more knowledge you get, the less you talk about your product. And I'm not trying to send the wrong message. Obviously, we don't have a company without the product, but the company is in that business. You're not. They determine what product to bring into the market. They've done their research. They're the ones that are liable for the lawsuits, not me. So I'm, I'm assuming they're gonna bring a product that's valuable into the marketplace. You see my assumption? If I buy a McDonald's franchise, do I say, well, hang on a second, before we start selling these burgers, okay, since my name is on the line, because I, I love when I hear this all the time, it's my reputation. Well, before I do this, can you tell me where the meat came from? Who does that? It's amazing. I mean, we, we, we feed our bodies every day with stuff. We have no idea where it comes from, and we put it in our bodies every day. How many of you gone to a restaurant? Okay, well, duh. Uh, do you know what's going on in the back there? Do you know where that food came from? Do you know how long the chicken was out? out? No, it's blind faith, and you just feed your face. You don't say, hang on a second. Let me go back to that kitchen and make sure everything is being refrigerated at the right degree. Okay, I think I made my point. Okay, but see, understand. Understanding defeats, defeats fear. Remember, a new person is going through a difficult period. They made a change. They made a change. But just remember where you were. They're excited. They got excitement and they got fear and doubt and they're both equal. They're at this height, I'm so excited, but here's fear and doubt. It's a difficult, pe uh, difficult period. A lot of people can't deal with their fear. This is why some people only last 90 to 120 days. So here's the analogy and I kind of alluded to it in the beginning. Okay, remember the newborn gazelle in the Serengeti? Okay, we could go with that one. We could go with a newborn baby. Okay, that's it. You gave birth. It's a baby. Babies choke a lot. Babies choke, eat, and poop. That's what they do. Okay, and they sleep. Wait, 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 wait. What is it? They, they, they eat, poop, and sleep. That's what babies do. 
That's what a new distributor does. <laughs> That's exactly what a new distributor does. They need someone to hold their hand. They need to be fed. Maybe you're nursing. I don't know. You know me. You know me. <laughs> distributors Lisa's nursed. Okay. And they go, okay, that's enough. You're 18 years old. Get off my boob. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Get off. I'm sore. This hurts. <laughs> it's time, right, that you start to feed yourself. Okay. So, you guys, you guys can you see it? Can you imagine? How many people just had a visual of Lisa nursing an 18 year old? <laughs> okay. I'm telling you. Okay. They want someone to hold their hand. They understand that most questions that are asked, they have no idea that they're normal. Right? You're going to send that person out. Go talk to your people. Oh, okay. Hi, I'm excited. What are you excited about? I don't know. Have you made any money? No. Then they come back to you and they go, the person didn't want to do it. Well, you just sent your newborn right to their first job interview come on you got to be there every step of the way that's stage one now remember people can enter into your business at different stages if someone has okay i'll give an example because i'm looking right at her okay sonia never went through stage one with me she had experience in the industry Okay, she, she was maybe stage two or three or four. I don't know. I'll tell you where she was in a second. Okay, <laughs> hang on a second. Okay, but she wasn't stage one. She knew how to feed herself. She could eat, she, someone you could actually walk. She could walk. Okay, come on, Sonia. Okay, boom, boom, boom. Good, 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 Sonia. Okay, make this phone call. This is a phone. She knew what a phone was. Okay. So she knew how to dial it. She knew how to speak. Now, you may be laughing, but I want you to understand sometimes what a new distributor is. We just think they're going to be self-reliant, a self-starter. I gave birth. Go. Can you imagine? Got to know what you bought. You got to know what you caught, not bought, what you caught. And a lot of people, most, will enter in at this level. And you're going to send them out there. And now they're going to get beat up. People keep them on the hot seat. The newborn baby starts to talk to people. So what do they need? They need to pull the expert in. That's you. You've got to make sure they're, you're available for them to take them to stage one. And so this is where people need knowledge. Sometimes we don't even equip them. We think, don't worry, everybody in your list is going to say yes. We don't equip them with the information. It's just numbers, guys. So do you guys understand stage one? How many people have sponsored people in stage one? How many of you are still in stage one? You have no understanding that the questions that you're hearing are normal. You don't understand that people don't want the answers. They just want to watch you squirm. In other words, people out there don't want to change. Well, I got to make sure this brand new distributor understands that. And I'm going to be there every step of the way when they do face rejection. Why? My job is to keep them in so they can make another call. Stage two, growing. Okay, now I got somebody, right? Maybe now they start to crawl. They start to have insight into what they've learned. Oh, wow, Alicia sat down with me. We did, we did, we did 50 calls together, right? But as we did that, she walked me through not to worry about the 40 people that said no, to focus in on the 10 people that wanted my information. And now I saw the process. And you know what I loved about the process? My sponsor did what they say they were going to do. And remember, they're going to always remember this because that's when they give birth, they'll remember how they were given birth. Remember the training on fear? What shapes us is our past, things we have learned. Remember that training? And I told you the story 
okay, about, about how my mom and dad used to fight. Well, that's what I learned. That's what, that's how I knew to how to handle if I got in a fight with Lisa, I just stopped talking. Remember that? Well, it's the same thing with your new distributor. If you were a bad sponsor and you never brought them through, that's what they know. And if they happen to sponsor somebody, they'll do the same thing with them. That's why I say I could look at anybody's organization and I could see what's being duplicated and I could go right back to the leader and go, now I know why. That's what they taught. That's what they're teaching. Some people teach, right, not liking the upline, not liking the leadership. Well, guess what? Everybody in that leg doesn't like the leadership. Now, do you think that would equip that person to do well in the business? Of course not. See, this is growing. And they start to have more understanding of why people say the things they do. Why? Because Alicia sat down with her with the first 50 people. Maybe Alicia went to a networking event with her. And now she starts to understand, wait a minute, these people, most people, I might talk to 50 people, but most people say the same things. It's the same objections. It's the same concerns. Now they're growing, they go, oh, I start to get understanding on why people are actually saying this. It's not me. That's what happens during the growing phase. They realize the no is not a reflection of them. They go, oh, got it now. Still tough dealing with the responses. Don't get me wrong. A no still hurts, still hurts for me. But it's different problems than they had when they started. That's growing. Oh my gosh, here we go again. I'm talking to more people. It's still the time objection. It's still the money. It's only the same four or five things. And now I know why people, this is how this is what I got out of it. Now I know why people are broke. Now I know why people are stuck. Because they use those same excuses and they bring them out every time a, a new opportunity comes their way. That's why they are where they are. And that's why, what I always remember, people, was my, my first mentor said that, they would say, that's why you are where you are, and that's why I am where I am. They expect to be put on the house hot, hot seat when they're growing, they're comfortable with it. See, how many people have you taken to stage two? Are you on stage two? Do you understand why people say what they say? Okay, so you start to have insight, and I try to give you this insight. That's when you know you're growing. Stage three, growing leaps and bounds. Now, that newborn is actually walking. Maybe they're even riding a bike. Right, they're starting to get some independence. I remember the first time, okay, now remember, this is back in the early 70s, okay, 62, probably 1970. I was eight years old. Okay, and I got my first bike. Now remember, this is when you know you go out and play till six o'clock. Your parents never even knew where you were. Okay. And 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 I remember getting my bike, and my mom said, Okay, I want you to go to the store for me. And the store was maybe five blocks down. And she actually gave me money, and I rode my bike to the store to get some groceries. For me, that was like growing leaps and bounds. I got out of my street and my mom gave me the, 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 the um, permission to go to the store and get some groceries. I started to grow. I, start, I started to, oh my gosh, I got responsibility. That's what stage three is. Maybe I don't need Alicia anymore. In fact, I don't need Alicia anymore. I have a better understanding of people makes it easier to have a good attitude. Why? Because Alicia walked me through stages one and two. I went through it. I've taken the training wheels off. I got this. I know the objections people are going to have. Because I was mentored right. I'm ready for them. 
And now I think it's fun when people try to put me on the hot seat. You're aware of it. You don't spend your time with the wrong people. You know what you're looking for. That's stage three. I want all of you to be in stage three, to be able to anticipate the objections, you're ready for them, you like being on the hot seat, and you are just a person that goes through their numbers. And you now start to really understand what has been said to you over and over again. That attitude really determines your altitude. It's how you handle. It's not whether or not you're going to get objections. It's how you handle them. And in the beginning, if I don't have somebody around me, and I'm in the Serengeti, and this male lion starts to walk towards me, okay, I don't know how to handle that. But if I have mama elephant next to me, she's going to protect me. So that's, that's, that's how you sponsor people. Stage four, master builder. This is the ultimate, right? Understand what people are going to do before they even say it. You've gone from being put on the hot seat to putting people on the hot seat. This is when you start asking the questions. You start to lead the conversations. They're not asking you what's in your product. Tell me about your compensation plan. Give me this, give me that. And you're running around like, 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 a, like a, a, a service person. No, 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 I'm asking the questions. What kind of business are you in? Where do you live? How long have you been doing what you're doing? Are you married? Does your wife work? How many kids do you have? Are they in sports? Do you travel a lot? I'm asking questions. They're on the hot seat. How long have you been doing what you're doing? Are you where where you want to be? I mean, they're, 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 you start to get really bold because you know what you're looking for. You don't have time. In the beginning, the biggest downfall is spending all your time with the wrong people. Why? Because all you got is all you got. And until you go get more, you'll keep spending your time with the people that will never do anything anyway. So you got to go get more. But you try to keep beating these people up. No. See, a master builder doesn't do that. I want to watch their response. When I ask pointing questions, I want to watch them squirm and try to justify why they are where they are. You know, you do it in a nice way, of course. But this is what makes you memorable, by the way. Because how many people actually have these conversations? Very few. We all just have surface conversations. How's it going? Oh, hurricane's coming. Did you see that hurricane? It's on its way. Okay, right? It's hot, it's cold, blah, blah. It's the same stuff. It's here that you begin to master the people business. Now, I've had people actually enter, enter into my business because they were builders. This is, another, this is another landmine. Some people just go out there and they just go after all the, all the people that have done it before. You got to understand what pool is you're fishing in. Where are you finding your people? Right? And what bait are you going to put on the hook? Now, don't let me make, don't, don't let me do the bait again. I think you all know what the bait is, right? What the opportunity gives you. So the value of training. The value of training is that anybody that enters into your business, here's your attitude. Everybody. Everybody has unlimited potential, right? A newborn baby, you don't determine right there and then if that baby is going to make, well, that baby's not going to make it. This baby's going to probably be a bum. I don't know. You don't determine what's going to happen. Everybody's born with potential. But if I don't do what I'm supposed to do, 
which is what? What is my job? My job is to get that new person into action. If they don't take action, it doesn't matter what their potential is. Maybe I'll potentially take action. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. No, here's the deal. I got to get them working. Because my job is what? Not for me to do the work. My job is to create the belief when they do the work. See? Look at that. Look at that, Larry. You made a phone call. High five, brother. Yeah, Jeff, but you know what? He didn't do it. He didn't even want the information. I don't care. You did it. Now let's do it again. Maybe we'll get better. Here's what I would do, Larry. Don't say this. Don't say that. Right? Stand up. Okay? You, you, you need to project. Just now, I, now I'm just coaching. So now he has belief because he actually dialed the phone. That's where some people are. They've never dialed a phone before. You got to understand that. You got to know what you caught. And then if I do this, we're going to get a result. And like I said, good or bad result is a good result. I don't know how many times I got to emphasize that. Good or bad result is a result. Larry, don't worry about it, man. We got five no's. Are you kidding me? Let's go celebrate. Because up until today, Larry, how many no's have you gotten? Well, I really never picked up the phone. And I'm, I'm just saying, I know he has. Okay. Well, uh, okay. So this is, guess what? Guess the, the value of what you just learned. See, it's all a spin. It's all a head game. And you got to protect because that fear and doubt is loud and clear. Some people make a one phone call and that fear and doubt goes, I'm telling you, I told you this wasn't going to work. And you got to go over here and go, wait a minute, I only made one call. I don't care. That's how all your calls are going to be. Why do you want to go through this? Your job's okay. Why did you accept this opportunity? Then over here, uh, maybe you're right. And here comes fear and doubt. Take it away, your excitement, and all of a sudden, you do nothing. That's what happens. So just, all you got to do is put yourself in, this, in, the, in the middle here. It's you. So, yes, we could talk about everybody else. But here's how, here's how I'm going to spin it back to you as I close this. You all have potential. You all, you, you've already made the decision. Some of you got to get off the breast. You're it's time. Okay, start feeding yourself. Some of you need the you, some of you need the breast. Okay? And some of you guys understand the potential you have is great, but everybody has that. When you start making a decision to take consistent action, consistent action. You're going to build your belief and you will start to get results. Biggest problem is people will take sporadic action. They may get excited for a moment and do calls for 20 minutes and then they're distracted. Or they may have a game plan one day to actually fill up their calendar with some events. Maybe they did one party at the house. They go, oh my gosh, I did it. Oh, Jeff, I'm exhausted. Well, what did you do? I had a party. Whew, you, I, I did it, Jeff. I did it. Okay, now what? Do you think the key to success is this? Get involved in this business, do one party, become financially independent. Come on. But see, so, it's, it's amazing how people think. No, I have to have the coach, though. So... That's, that is the value, let's go back, that is the value of training. So on Friday, on Friday, well, yeah, we'll, 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 do, we'll do it the following Friday, okay? We'll see you guys on Friday. I appreciate you, okay? Take your potential, put it into action today, okay? Talk to you all very soon. Thanks, guys. Bye.